Uh, and so the idea here uh, is that it, the book came out, but it sold probably in the end almost 10,000 copies. Uh, and a successful nonfiction book sells about 7,500 copies. Yeah, I was pleased too. I was pleased too. Thank you for the encouragement. Uh, and do you know a successful novel sells 5,000 copies? 5,000. Buck 50 a book. Do the math. So uh, that's successful. That's not a bomb. If you have a bomb, you sell about 800 copies, you'll never get another book published again. So that's just the sad, you know, reality of it. So, so the budget, well, they immediately want to enter into negotiations. Uh, they said, we want to do a disaster, another disaster book. <laughs> I was like, okay. Something like in the colonial, something pre-Civil War at least. Uh, something with American history because that's what we, we sells the most for us. I was like, okay, I can do that. And I was looking at an idea about Benjamin Franklin inventing hot air ballooning. Uh, he was a witness to it. He didn't actually do it, but he was a witness to it at, do it while the peace treaty was being, he was working on the peace treaty over in France in 1783 and witnessed the invention. I was like, what a great story. It's very interesting. They set up like a duck, a uh, goose, and like a chicken in the first attempt, and, and they survived, and so they started sending people up, and unfortunately a few did crash. But uh, Anyway, I was like, well, I'm really interested in this idea. I was like, well, that's not it. I was like, well, I've been, I've been reading all my Benjamin Franklin biographies again, and I keep coming across this smallpox epidemic in which Benjamin Franklin was against inoculation, and the doctors of Boston were against inoculation because they were trying it out for the first time in, in the American colonies. And I was like, but the Puritan ministers, including Cotton Mather of, of infamy with the, with the Salem witch trials, he was for it. He was the guiding force behind it. And as soon as I said, he's like, that's it. That's the book we're doing. We'll send the contract out. I was like, great. Uh, the advance went up like $1,500 or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now I'm racking in the money. Uh, and so Pox and the Covenant uh, came out. And did, did I mention Hurricane came out? You know that, that little recession we had starting in September of 2008? Yeah, yeah. That's when my book was published. So, <laughs> so that really helped sales a lot. So. Um, that was unfortunate, and of course, you know, things kind of still lagged behind, and, and Pox and the Covenant did well too, you know, about 10,000 copies and all that, and so they wanted to do another book, and so the uh, famous Jamestown experiment um, is, you know, we did the same kind of thing, and, and, and I had a third, you know, third book in the works with, with the same publisher, and, and things were going really well and all that, and, and, and eventually published that book as well. Um, and, you know, that's a look at, at early America in terms of, you might even say maybe early American entrepreneurship, capitalism, it explores the Jamestown colony as basically a business venture. Uh, you know, they were coming here to make a lot of money, uh, a lot, you know, to, to find gold and so forth. Uh, and the typical story of why the colony failed, everyone says, well, there was some class conflict and the gentlemen didn't want to do any work and they made the, the, the poor people do all the work, all the artisans, and, and there weren't enough for them and so forth. And so that, that's generally the typical story. And, and they also said there was just a lot of licentiousness. Uh, the men had too much liberty and so forth and nobody wanted to do any work and so forth. I actually found, you know, poking around the primary sources, that there was a very different story, actually. Uh, they were promised the rights of Englishmen right in their charter of 1606 that, that they got from the king, but they did not enjoy those rights, right? They lived under basically what was tantamount to martial law for about a decade. Uh, they were not enjoying their rights. They had no self-government. They were not in, enjoying their rights. They could not own property. You know, basically the company owned everything. Uh, the profits they made went to the company. They didn't personally benefit. And the food was they just ate out of the ship's storehouse. Who would plant corn in here if you could just get free food from the storehouse? Would you sit there and sweat in the tidewater heat and plant corn when you could just go eat for free? That's what they did, right? And so the colony, besides the very high death rate and all that, and the, the starving time, uh, it was just an abysmal failure. I mean, it was a, such an abysmal failure, they were packing up to leave, right? Right after the starving time, uh, a couple ships got stranded from another hurricane uh, over in Bermuda. They finally had the ingenuity to build a couple new ships from the sh uh, materials they salvaged from their main ship that they were traveling in. Uh, they put together two ships, which is just incredible, sailed to uh, Virginia, and as they're sailing in, 
the starving time is happening. They're like, what's happening here? And, and everyone was dying, and there was even cannibalism, and they're eating rats and snakes, and in the, in the end, even each other. And after about six weeks there, they say, this is just, we're going to starve to death. We need to leave. So they pack up. They bury their cannon to, to, so that the Native Americans can get it, and they leave. They pack up and leave. It's like, we failed. We're going to die. They're going to make for Finland, do some, or not Finland, Newfoundland, uh, do some fishing up there, and then sail for England. At the moment they're coming out of the Chesapeake Bay, the new governor comes in. At that moment, I mean, that's just an amazing coincidence that, that they're there right at the same time. And the new governor is like, go back to Jamestown. You're staying. We're going to make a go of this. And what does he do? He and his successor, they bring even harsher laws, right? Thomas Dale, his, I think they're called like the laws divine, martial, and, and civil, uh, something like that. And it, it institutes very harsh martial law. You talk back to the governor three times, you're going to be put to death. You steal something, you're going to be put to death. I mean, they just had sort of this obsession with the death penalty. Almost anything you did wrong, death penalty, OK? And, and they're not in, who wants to come to Jamestown and suffer? And, you know, 80% of the colonists there were dying. They're like, we can have a miserable life and die in England. <laughs> Why would we come to Jamestown and die, right? Uh, and so no one's coming to the colony. It's 1614, 1615. Immigration is almost totally stopped. And, it's only, and, and everyone says tobacco saved the colony. That's, that's a very typical line, right? They started planting tobacco, and, and everyone got rich, and, and then they survived. I would argue that that, that was a secondary sort of, sort of cause, but it wasn't really the underlying cause of why Jamestown succeeded. What I would argue is that it's because they started getting private property. They got a house of Burgesses and started governing themselves in 1619, right? Uh, if they wanted to eat, they needed to plant their own food, okay? And they could benefit from the food they were growing. And so, you know, it made sense. They started appealing to their human nature. No longer were they living under martial law and just eating out of the common storehouse. So, so I thought I had an important new story to tell, examining the primary sources, examining the evidence. Well, well, that book came out, and, and at the same time I was writing that, I had a friend over at Colonial Williamsburg, right? We're right in the middle of the recession. And he says, hey, Tone, uh, my entire department has been laid off. I have this book idea. I have got Roman and Littlefield, a pretty big publisher, interested in it. Uh, how would you like to write it? I was like, yeah, I'd like to write it. That would be great. I was like, you're just handing off a book idea to me that a publisher is interested? Sure. And that became America's Beginnings. And it was basically a, a book uh, of what we narrowed it down to of 50 of the most significant colonial and revolutionary events that really define uh, the American character, that talk about the principles of liberty and self-government. It shows the, the courage, the perseverance it took to found America. Because there, there was, you know, it took a lot of courage to, to come here from, from the time of, of Jamestown and, and also the Puritans. And there were a lot of wars along the way and a, a lot of controversy and, and, and a, a lot of struggle, right? And, and this, the struggle for liberty and the American Revolution and all that. And eventually they founded a country. And so I trace the, Amer the nation's origins from the settlement at Jamestown up through the Constitutional Convention uh, and tell that story of liberty and self-government. Uh, and so that came out too and, and had the four books published. Uh, and then my wife got laid off her job Right? And I'm a writer just racking in the dough. Uh, and we have no money. And, and if it weren't for the kindness of, of uh, some help from, from relatives, we would have been out of a home. Uh, we wouldn't have been able to sell our home because uh, you know, all the houses after 2008 were, less, were worth less than what you paid for them. And so you couldn't even sell your house. I mean, I would, we would have faced disaster. And so, uh, so I went back to teaching. And my wife fortunately got a, a, another job. And, and I went back to teaching and just you know, at, at Hanna School Peninsula Catholic. And I was just so um, excited to get it and really loved teaching. And I was back in the classroom uh, and said, OK, well, this is what I'm going to do. Uh, and don't forget, all those times I said I wasn't going to do something and just fade into the woodwork and never become a writer. And all those things happened. I said, okay, I'm going to stick with teaching. I love it. I, I really love the students at Peninsula Catholic. Uh, I really miss them this year. But uh, I've started a new job again. <laughs> and, you know, a lot of people say to me, you know, you've taken a lot of risks in your life. And I was like, 
okay, I, I guess you can look at it that way. I'm just following things that, that I really believe in, from, from teaching to writing books uh, to now working for the Washington Jefferson Madison Institute in Charlottesville. And we teach teachers American founding principles uh, through seminars. We just held a seminar today on Alexander Hamilton and the Constitution. And we, you know, if any of you are interested in history or being a teacher or so forth, we'd love to see you uh, come to our seminars and we, and we might do some programs here at the college. Uh, and so, uh, we're, you know, I am and David and I are really dedicated to, to seeing, uh, seeing this institute grow. We're really dedicated to it. And I guess in the end, I don't know how we're running on time. About time? Uh, okay, okay. A, a little, I can be verbose, but I, in the next 30 seconds. <laughs> I <laughs> See, Hannah on Facebook, she threatened to heckle me, but I didn't think that I'd get heckling from, <laughs> from my host, so. <laughs> so. I just your time. No, that's okay, that's okay. But let, you know, let, let me wrap it up by saying that, you know, I didn't actually end up going to law school, as we mentioned. Uh, I, I didn't make a lot of money. I certainly don't drive a Ferrari. I, I don't live in, 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 a, in a huge house, but I've always loved what I've done. I've loved working with young people. I love working with teachers now. You know, I, I, even in my books, I saw them as, as good storytelling, but also to try to educate people about our nation's past. Uh, and, and I can honestly say this, that I am truly one of the happiest people on the face of the earth, because I, I have never for one day in my life gotten up and said, I don't want to go to work today. I have always really, really enjoyed what I do, really, really loved what I do. And, and I also think along the way, teaching and teaching teachers, all these things that I've done, writing books, I've also thought that it's, it's really important and, and almost like a public service. Uh, and so, uh, I, you know, when I first was invited to this talk, I thought I was just talking about my books uh, and, and I, it ended up, uh, want, you know, he wanted me to, to speak more about myself and I was a little uncomfortable doing that, you know. Uh, but, but it's fine, you know, I love sharing my experience with you. I just don't like talking and bragging on myself and talking about myself. But, um, but to share that experience with you about what, you know, what do you really want out of life? You know, uh, you know what are you going to major in? What do you want out of life? What are you going to do with this degree? Um, what, to what use are you going to put it? Um, and I also say in the end, my other, I guess, piece of advice was to say, um, you know, one of the most important things I, I tell my students is that, yeah, the education is really, really important and the degree you get and the, and the career you get, but it's also really important to think about, you know, being a, you know, a future wife, a future husband, a father, grandfather, you know, mother, grandmother, you know, who you are, your character is in the end going to be probably a lot more important than what you do you know, you know, with your career. You know, very few people look back on their life when they're on their deathbed and say, oh man, I should have gone to law school and made all that money. You know, uh, you start to think about what's, what's truly important in your life. So I hope you benefit from Thank that a little bit. Thank you.